Sign number four, what makes a subculture different from other notions. In fact, the subculture is more inherent in places than in temples or churches. For example, bikers have a bike house, vogue dancers have houses, and role, role players have studios or conventions. Uh, we are talking directly about the house, not the temple or church. Temples are not distinctive to subcultures at all. How do they explain what a bike house is? Bike house, it's like a hotel, some kind of an area, a house, where you can sit at a table, barbecue, sleep, take a motorcycle apart, etc. And in such house, people gather according to their interests and do something simple, which has nothing to do with spiritual miracles. A bike house is like a second home where you can eat, relax. A parallel can be drawn with the concept of headquarters. Great temples or mystical sanctuaries that open their doors for their members once every hundred years, this has definitely nothing to do with subcultures. The organization of such a house is a personal matter. There are no institutions that control or supervise the execution to having such a house. So now we can see that for a subculture, a place or a house is distinct and not a church or a temple. Sign number five. Symbols and attributes. Perhaps at this stage, all of us at least once said, Wow, I seen a crazy tattoo on this guy. Or I seen an interesting symbol on this necklace she was wearing. Hmm, I wonder what it means. All subcultures, without exception, have a certain symbolism. And even if you do not visually notice them, this does not mean that they have disappeared somewhere. There's a time and a place for everything. Get to know the person a little better, and you will definitely find the symbol that he or she really likes. The symbolism in a subculture is very boundless and rich. On example, tattoos. Representatives of subcultures often choose symbols according to the principle, I just like it. You know, it, it just looks cool or powerful. That's how they choose it. Even though Julie or Zhenya have no idea that the symbol uh, they see and choose in the 21st century are actually thousands of years old and have nothing to do with the modern era. On instance, the richest symbolic heritage of the Celts, starting from anthropomorphic ornaments made of birds, snakes, and trees to crossed battle axes. In our time, many different subcultures use the symbolism of the Celts. From pacifists to partygoers or ravers, from bikers to Satanists, you know, I'm just curious, what would a Celt think if they met some punk or hippie that has tattoos from head to toe with their symbolism. For the Celts, symbols had a religious meaning. And what value do they have for representatives of subculture? The answer is, usually, they would say, I just love that tiger, the roped anchor and the dragon, and please uh, tattoo that on my back. Uh, also right here, uh, tattoo born a wolf using Arabic letters. This testifies that the representatives of subcultures do not care and wh what and where is prescribed or written. There's no controlling factors of where and what to put on one's body. They just like the goose and they get it tattooed on them. The goose can be tattooed in the armpit, on the shoulder, or the lower back. It just does not matter, whatever he chooses. Trying to analyze the symbolic reflection 
on the external appearance of this type of person and trying to find a logical sense is close to impossible because it's just a mix. It could be a prison tattoo interlaced with Indian or Malaysian symbols. All of these tattoos can even be sometimes under the amulet of the sun, which is a Slavic symbol, with a tattoo of a proto-American culture symbol on top of it. So, with someone's subjective point of view, this type of mix has no logic. It's just absurd. But from the viewpoint of the representative of the subculture, this is just a special story, and there is logic in it. There's an absolute logic to all of these tattoos. Symbols can be chosen from completely different cultures and eras. A Norman wolf can sit on the right shoulder of a biker and a central African tiger on the left. Each representative of the subculture has his own viewpoint, his own idea, and his striving towards making it happen. And all these attributes and symbols are what he feels allows him to express himself. Let's take hippies again as an example. How did hippies validate and explain the fire as their main idea? Without further ado, for centuries there has been a beautiful myth, a tale about a certain hero named Badvasambhavna, and having flown away sitting on a lion, he left an equally beautiful legacy, the Book of the Dead. Somehow, later it turned out that the Book of the Dead is absolutely suitable for the hippie culture, and those who are interested begin to read it carefully. The idea is to get into the samsara, but how can one do this? You can't just all of a sudden find yourself there. It does not work. This means they used an adapter, if you will, that's called LSD. So now they're sitting there, in one hand a book, the Book of the Dead, in the other hand LSD, and long live the altered state of consciousness. Does this sound absurd? What do you think? Perhaps your answer is yes, but some 50 years ago, for a hippie, it was as logical as the law of gravity. So the logic of the subculture establishes its central idea. Attributes and symbols reflect this idea. They can be divided into two categories, common distinctive symbols and personal symbols and attributes. Let's say there is a bike club. This subculture has an idea and attributes and even the crest of the club, which, we, which they wear in the form of a patch on the jackets. All of the attributes that are listed is something that allows for distinction between one bike club from another. But each individual biker of the same bike club in his own special way expresses the ideas of the subculture through his own attributes that are distinctive only to him, ranging from pendants to tattoos. In fact, each of these people has both the common attributes and their own personal ones. Common ones or ones that visually confirm the belonging to a subculture. On the other hand, the representative also has his own attributes which express a certain idea from his personal point of view. You may also find a person that has face piercings or body tattoos and he sincerely believes that these attributes make him protected from all sorts of troubles and even fatalities. And we warn you in advance to try to explain something, somehow discourage him by letting him know that growling wolf tattoo will not scare away potential robbers and will not keep you away from danger is useless. We remind you that in any subculture, no one explains anything to anyone, and they listen to those that they want to listen to. Again, there is no controlling factors in a subculture. A person chooses himself what he wants to do, and he thinks for himself.